الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون صدق الله العظيم In this ayah that I have recited to you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving humanity in particular in general and then specifically to the ummah the believers the idea that إنما المؤمنون إخوة that the mu'mineen are like brothers now when we say it like brothers, that doesn't necessarily mean the brothers that you would have when you are brothers from the same parents. It's an idea of a brotherhood. What is the idea of the brotherhood is what we're going to talk about today. That إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً So now when we live in sort of kind of a brotherhood, notice the word hood, we also see that word hood in neighborhood. People. They live together, that share the problems, that share the goodness, that share the happiness. The people who are together in it, that's the hood. That's the whole idea of a hood. So in the brotherhood, you're sharing certain things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you are in the sharing business. So فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخْوَيْكُمْ Whenever your brothers have anything going wrong between them, Step up and fix it. Step up and fix it. Have a positive environment. If any negative element comes between the brotherhood, come and fix it. So that the harmony is maintained. Now think about it, if you ever go into a party where five, six, seven, ten people are sitting, but two people are not talking to each other, that's quite evident. And now think about it, if you live in a community where two groups are not talking with each other, that's even more evident. It's even more negative. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whenever you run into this kind of a situation, fix things between your brothers. فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Be God conscious. At all times be God conscious. Why? لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon you. So that you are in His mercy. So now look at it. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tied with the harmony of the place that we live in. And the harmony of that place we live in, we are responsible for harmonizing or deharmonizing that situation. We can make or break things. So when in the Makkan period, when people were coming in the fold of Islam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam created a brotherhood among the believers. A lot of the time you hear only about the Madani period, when the life in Medina. But there was also a brotherhood in the Makkan period, the life in Makkah. The 13 years. But that brotherhood was very different. That brotherhood was like this. Two weak people from the society are under the protection of one Strong person. Too weak, one strong. The reason was that there were more weak people in the society that were believers compared to the number of strong people. And the strong people were also trying left and right wherever they can to support the other individuals like Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu who went and freed Bilal. When he saw the Bilal getting punished, it was the Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu that when he accepted Islam, he went into business community because he was a very successful business person. He, has a, he was a cloth merchant. So he went into business community and he started speaking with the business community. Community, business hood. Sharing of the problems. So he spoke with Uthman ibn Affan. He spoke with Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas. He spoke with Zubair ibn al-Awam, Talha bin Ubaidullah. These were all business people. Very successful business people. And all of these people accepted Islam because of the working of the Abu Bakr. 
So like that, other people also went in their neighborhoods. When Umar accepted Islam, you would not believe how Umar accepted Islam. We've talked about it in the past. But when he, Umar accepted Islam, you know what, who was the first person he went and told that I've accepted Islam? The worst person in Mecca, Abu Jahl. Who was Abu Jahl for Umar? Umar's mother was Abu Jahl's sister. So Abu Jahl was Umar's uncle on the maternal side. So he went during the daylight and knocked on the door of Abu Jahl. And the Abu Jahl came out and said, Ya Umar, ma bika ya Umar, why did you come at the salah? He said, I have come this hour because I wanted to tell you that I have accepted Islam. Bang! He slapped the door in his face. Then Umar went in the Kaaba and he started telling people, I have accepted Islam, I have accepted Islam. I want it to be known. So the idea was that he wanted this new community that was getting established to be known that it now has a strength. So community building is one process and having a strength in the community is another process. So when the community has a strength, when community sticks together, there is a likelihood that the community will survive. And to survive, if you inject positiveness, it will going to survive on positive grounds as opposed to surviving on the negative grounds. That is why the ayah of the Qur'an, which comes from Surah Al-Hujurat, that I've recited to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ They are in a brotherhood. فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ So when you find that two of your brothers are having a hard time with each other, bring them close. Bring them close. Try so that their problems could be overcome. And what the Allah be God conscious. Now what does God conscious has to do with this? Because God consciousness doesn't end praying five times a day and fasting in the month of Ramadan and going for Hajj al-Bayt. It doesn't end there. Or paying zakah, paying zakah, it doesn't end. It is one of the components, the foundation principles on which the faith lies. But you got to excel and come out and bring what is in you, the good out, and build a community that is strengthened, that is good. It is important. Now think about it, if two people are not talking to each other, what happens in the next few years? Two families are not talking to each other. Now the relatives on this side are not talking to the relatives on that side. Because you have upset somebody in their family, and then when the community grows, it passes on generation after generation, it's a rift. But if you fix the problem early on, then you have to fix a big rift that would linger on for ages. So that's exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the communities to be built in a fashion where the rift is mended with peace and love. In the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, there was a tribal system which exists even in these times. In the Arab world, in the Afghan world, northern Pakistan. There is a big tribal system. People live in tribes and, and living with tribe is basically their pride. So in a tribal system, if you upset an individual, you have upset everybody. And if the chief of the tribe gets upset on somebody, you have upset the whole tribe. So in the tribal system, in the life of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the tribes went in clashes with each other, even though they were both believers. And the Prophet وسلم, had to set very, very strong rules that you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't have these kind of clashes in the name of faith. Because it has nothing to do with your faith. In one of the battles when they were returning back, a man from one side hurt the man from the other side. And then the swords came out. Swords came out in the life of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Sixth year into the Madani period. Ya ma'ashar al-ansar, ya ma'ashar al-muhajireen. And the swords came out again. And the Prophet stood up and said, what are you doing? What are you doing? 
These nationalistic pride don't exist in this faith. Because you are in a brotherhood. You've been tied in La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. If your brother deviates from La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, then you can approach the brother and bring him back. But these grounds don't hold any grounds. So the point is that the brotherhood is extremely important and is tied to God consciousness, taqwa. Why is it tied to God consciousness? Because if you're God conscious, you want harmony. Because the heart wants peace. When there is no peace around you, your heart is not at peace. To attain the higher level of peace, you have to bring that peace out and among the people that you live with. So that there is a positivity. Positivity is so important. At workplace, they spend thousands of dollars every year trying to bring in speakers so that the speaker can speak to these thousands of people and motivate them positively. Because they want to create a positive workforce. The governments do a lot of things, crazy things, giving holidays all year round, left and right. Every month there is a holiday. Why? Every time there is a long weekend, you're happy. When you're happy, you contribute back. When you contribute back, there's an economic cycle going on. The economy is growing. People are contributing, which generates business, which creates employment. There's a whole supply chain system. When people are traveling, they're using resources like cars. For example, the cars break down. The people who work on cars, the garages, they gain business. The gasoline gets used. The convenience shops, the gas station, everything, everything gets, comes in circle. Because people are happy. People are happy. Now they want to contribute. So happiness contributes a lot. If I'm not happy with a place, I will not be able to contribute to the cause. If I'm happy with this place, I'm going to come and contribute. Anytime the place needs, I'm going to donate hours, I'm going to donate money, I'm going to ask my kids, this is what you guys need to do. So happiness in the community is very important. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aslihu baynakum. Now let's look at another ayah that I have, I have shared with you last time. Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. Among all of you, it doesn't matter what is your caste, creed, color, nationality, it doesn't matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, taqwa, the God consciousness, is what is important. And it is the aspect of God consciousness that the positivity should be injected back in the community. And another ayah that I have quoted to you many times in the last month, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ you have been given the month of fast so that you may fast as the people before you. Why? So that you gain God consciousness. These are all God consciousness ayahs. Because God consciousness brings a lot of positivity in you. How? Because every time you go out and do an action, you have a little book to look at. Which is the book in you. The book tells you the right from wrong. And the book tells you right in your heart, do it or don't. Then it's your decision. Once you pick up that bad decision, now that bad decision is with you forever. If you make a good decision, that's with you forever. So you have to make the decision. And that God conscious decision will always be right because now you have made a decision keeping in mind, will my Allah be happy or will he be sad or mad when I make this kind of an effect? Back on myself and my community. A person who is troubled here and a person who is troubled here we're going to cause trouble around. If a person is at peace here, and if a person is at peace here, we're going to cause peace around. So a lot of the time you'll see certain people get mad. We're looking at they're getting mad, but we don't look at why are they getting mad. Because something was not mended in their life at some point in time. Some people are crazy by nature, that's a different thing. But some people lose temper. Because something is going wrong in their life. So the idea is to fix the problem in the bud rather than when it becomes a tree. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْ لَمَثُوبَةٌ مِّنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ And if they had believed and they were God conscious, then the reward from Allah would have been far better if only they knew. So the God consciousness after the belief 
is extremely important. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another place says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Have gone through God consciousness so that you may survive and benefit and succeed in the life hereafter. There is another piece of an ayah that I want to bring to you. وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ يَعْلَمُهُ اللَّهُ And whatever good you do, whatever good you do, Allah knows it. Good. Good. Now that's a very Aristotle term. He would go out in the streets and he would hold people like lawyers. He would hold people like congressmen and say, define good. Define good. Define good means good is quantitative or qualitative. You cannot quantify good. You cannot say this much is good or that much is good. There is no measurement of goodness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the measurement of goodness. He said, what is in accordance with what I have told you is good? And what is it not in accordance with what I have told you is not good? So good parameter is given in reward with another word which has no units that we know of. Hasana. What is hasana? You say, you do this, you get 10 hasana. You do this, you get 27 hasana. You do this, you get 1,000. What is hasana? We don't know the unit. Kilogram, I know the unit, 1,000 grams. And I can take a gram and go in micrograms. I can take a milliliter and go further. I can take a liter and go further. I can take a mile and go further. I can take a feet and break it into inches. Break an inch into a centimeter, centimeter into millimeter, millimeter into micrometer. But for hasana... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is hasana. He said, but your unit of good is hasana. And I know what is hasana. And by the way, you will not going to enter the jannah because of your hasana. You will enter the jannah because of my mercy. It is my mercy upon you that I let you do hasana. Can you fast at your own will? Can you come and pray at your own will? Can you stand at your own will? That is why when the adhan is called, we have to repeat every time the Mu'azzin says anything after the Mu'azzin the exactly the same way, except for when he says, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala al-falah. We say, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Because I don't have power to rush to salah. I don't have power to rush to success. Only if Allah wish, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. There is no power than the mightiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only He can rush me towards goodness. So you're asking Allah to hold you and bring you to goodness and bring you to success. So it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that constantly helps us and this helping promotes this community business. This community business that we live in. Every piece of a puzzle in a community should be stick with some piece. So the puzzle can be completed. Now think about it when we get together here in potlucks, in picnics. That's one way to get communities together. You come here every week, Yawm al on the Friday prayer, you get connected with each other. This connection, every time somebody moves new in the community, what, what, did, what place do they go to so that they can get to know the community? Masajid, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's where people welcome. You don't have to put anything in the box to have entrance here. There is no membership to enter masjid. You walk into the masjid because inna al-masajid lillah, because the masajid are the house of Allah subhanahu wa taala. You walk in there, you get to meet and greet people. Your kids get to meet and greet other individuals, and then you establish a connection. And that connection helps you. The problem is we don't take that connection to the next level. We do not take that connection to strengthen our bounds. We do not take that connection at an education level. As a middle school kid, I should be able to help these elementary school kids and tell them, do this and don't do that. And they will only going to say that to the elementary school kids when the high school kids will tell the middle school kids, this is what you should do if you want to succeed and excel in the middle school because these are the high schools in the area. If you don't do, do well, this is where you're going to end up. If you do well, this is where you're going to end up. And the high school kids will only do that when the college kids will tell them, this is what you've got to do if you want to be at college. Because you know what? In the next 10 years, 65% 
of the employment would require a college degree in U.S. Ooh, 65% in 10 years. If I'm 16 in 10 years, I'll only be 26. That means I still have to work for another 40 years. I should better get a college education. And these college-going kids will do that only if the workforce people are tied to them. So it's, everything has to be directed. The community has to be linked. In order for this linking to happen, there has to be a support system. You know, an example that I share from my workplace is some programs were having retention problems. Students were leaving, first semester, second semester. There were some programs which are harder than the other programs because there was no support system. So we thought of an idea. We gave them open labs. In the open labs, they were headed by advanced students. And we said, okay, the labs are open four days a week during the times that you can come in. And they were there, and if they get stuck, instead of asking each other, they would ask the advanced students, who would not just help them, will help them understand, will, will also help them survive. And if they ever have this plan of, I should drop out from this course, or I should drop out from this program, they will pull them in. They'll say, no, 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 don't do that. We also went through this process, you know. It happens. In a few months, you will be familiar with this. Do this, do that. Here's a support, there's a support. And then they started having little support groups that would meet on weekends, at libraries, at college facility. You know, the support system helped them survive those years of college, and they graduated, and they're part of the workforce, and once, they created this little, once we created this little model, they just took it to the next level. So model of connection is very important. We are living in an age of connectedness. We are connected through Facebook. Whatever I'm saying or saying right now over here, provided I have the right medium, doesn't matter where you are on the place of the planet Earth, you can listen to me. Or maybe in the skies. So the connectedness is there. Are we getting connected? Or are we stopping at a certain level? How many of us are professionally connected on social media sites like LinkedIn? Our professional network? People that we worked with in the past? People that we went to school with in the past? Now, I tell my college kids all the time, as a first semester students, you should start building your LinkedIn profile if you haven't done so. And that's where you get should connect it to your classmates, seniors, college professors, and through these connections, when you graduate, you already have a network of hundreds of people out there. Because these senior students will graduate way before you, and by the time you are in the workforce, they are already working in the workforce for a couple of years at least. You go to conferences. You get to meet people. You connect with them after the conference, because you're building your network. You want to grow. So the same idea of growth must be there as an individual in every community because this growth helps us succeed and get connected with each other. So, and that will going to start where? Aslihu. Mending process. You got to mend with each other. You got to blend with each other. You get to forget about the differences because those differences are far smaller. There's a lot of catching up for us to do at least. A lot of catching up. We can't waste time on this crazy stuff.